Black Bear's Picnic, Chapter 1 Ethan Jones The story starts in 1985. I mean, really it goes much further back, but for the moment, we start in 1985. I'll see you later, Mom! Bye! Uh, wait, what are we having for dinner later? It's Friday today, honey, so it'll be meatloaf. Oh, right. Thanks. Ethan Jones, 17 years old, seems like any old regular teenager living in the small town in Utah. Well, that's how he started off at least. Damn it, I'm gonna be late! He was pretty smart for his age though, and pretty daring. Liked taking risks. Nothing really out of the ordinary though. One thing about him stuck out though, he was determined. Not for anything in particular, but whatever task was at hand, he had extreme determination for. Sorry I'm late, Mr. Smith. Mm, late again, Ethan. This is your third time this week. I'm sorry, it's just every morning I've been working on a project, so I get a bit carried away. <laughs> a project? Yeah, I'm going to try to build an exoskeleton. You know, one of those things that you wear and it can lift heavy objects and you can program it to do certain things. It's a bit like that Pitman exoskeleton that was proposed recently, where it can scan your brain and stuff. That's enough, Ethan. We need to get started on our work. Okay, sir. Anyway, enough of that silly sci-fi nonsense. Now let's get on with the real robotics. Everyone turn to Chapter 3 on the Unit 1 Robotics Manual. Last lesson, we had just got to the end of Chapter 2, where we discussed the use of robotics in a certain <sighs> environment. This recap, wasn't the first this time this had happened. Ethan often got put down when he talked about his projects. People constantly told him he was wasting his time, and that what he was doing was ridiculous. Ethan, recite the laws of robotics for me, please. The robot may not injure a human being or, through inaction, allow a human being to come to harm. A robot must obey the orders given to it by human beings except where such orders would conflict with the first law. A robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. Um, <clears throat> that is a textbook definition. Well done, Ethan. It turns out that Ethan's constant research and studying was proving to be pretty good for his robotics class. Have you got any homework today? No. Hang on, where are you going? Um, I wanted to work on my thing, you know? <sighs> you and that project, mister. Well, dinner will be at the usual time. Your dad's got the night shift again. All right. All right then, what to do now? It's only been a week and I already have so much done. Hey, Ethan. Uh, what I, is it now? I was just going to ask. God, I can't just be left alone today, can I? Get out! Oh, okay. Ethan recently had quite the short fuse, especially when he's interrupted while working. Ethan, you have some clothes to put away out here? Yeah, okay. Ethan! What? Excuse me. I want you to put these away now before they get creased. And the state of your room is ridiculous. Just wait one sec, Mom. Your dad should have never brought this computer home. I think you need a break from this project of yours. Mom, I had stuff on there. It's all gone now. Well, you're not listening to me. You've been getting so angry recently. Peter told me you shouted at him just now. Ugh, I hardly shouted. Ethan, these are basic chores, and you never get them done. Right. Where do you think you're going? I'm going out for a bit. I can't stand this house anymore. Ah, oh, fine. Just be back around 7 o'clock for dinner. Whatever. Ethan never used to be like this. These arguments have only been a recent occurrence. Typical teenage behavior, I suppose, but it's wholly unlike him. He preferred to get out of the house and go for a walk whenever things got heated. I mean, it works and he's 
mostly cooled down by the time he's back home. He strode through the streets, thinking to himself, Why can't people just ever leave me alone? I'm always interrupted or told off whenever I'm in my most concentrated mood. Now when I get home, I'm not going to be motivated enough to carry on work. Right at that moment, lightning struck, briefly illuminating a property to his right that was previously shrouded in darkness. Ethan stops dead in his tracks and looks up at the looming building. He had never gone to this side of town before. It featured a large sign on the front of a jolly mascot black bear, stretching his gloved left hand out enthusiastically as if to entice people inside. His right hand grasped onto some sort of star-shaped wand. He donned a star's bangled vest and wore a golden monocle over his right eye, as well as sporting a matching top hat and bow tie. The sign read, Crafty's Crafts. Ethan shuddered for a moment. He wasn't really sure why, but the place gave him the creeps. Glancing down at the illuminated front window, he noticed a small poster, one that he would have missed if he hadn't stopped. The random chance of a lightning strike illuminating this building will go on to change his life forever. Help wanted. New staff member needed to restock arts and crafts stationery as well as party supplies. We'll also need to perform some janitorial work as we are very low on staff. Need someone with excellent customer service skills and is determined to work their task to the best of their abilities. Christopher Wright, the manager. Hmm. I never wanted to get a job, but if I get this, then maybe Mom will shut up about me doing nothing all day. Uh, hello? Even though it was still open, it was extremely quiet. Hello? Is somebody there? Hello. Sorry for the wait. My name is Adam, and welcome to Crafty's Crafts. How may I help you? Uh, hello. Is the manager here right now? Yes, he's here. What's it about? It's about the job application on the window outside. Uh, okay. Just come with me. He's in his office. All right. Ethan follows Adam through the various rooms of the establishment. There was an arts and crafts room, which had several rows of tables, with pieces of cardboard, paint, and stationery scattered across them. Each table had a basket with little googly eyes on them. They were filled with some stationery, though it didn't seem like nearly enough. Loose balloons were stuck onto the ceiling, along with streamers and bunting strewn across the room. They passed through an arcade, which only had a couple of arcade cabinets lining the walls, as well as some cheaply made cardboard basketball hoops. Although everything was new, it was clear that this business was small and on a pretty limited budget. They eventually got to a dining area, which was probably the biggest room in the building. It had two small families still eating. The same tables lined the room, each with dirty paper plates and plastic cups that were yet to be cleared up from the lack of staff. Ethan glanced over next to him to see a small stage with bright red curtains obscuring a tall figure that stood behind it. Uh, what's behind there? What's behind the stage? Eh, it's just this place's mascot. It's switched off for the night. Is it the guy on the sign outside? Yeah, Crafty the Bear. It's a suit that we have to wear sometimes, but most of the time it performs on its own. How does it do that? I think it's spring lock or something. It can swap between a robot and a regular mascot suit. A bit like an exoskeleton then, right? I guess so. That thing really isn't as interesting as it looks, trust me. Ethan couldn't keep his eyes off that stage, trying his best to peek beneath the gaps in the curtains. He was so intrigued by the suit that lay behind it. But, at the end of the day, he came in for another reason. Good luck. He's a bit weird. Uh, okay. Ethan immediately noticed that the office had a strange smell to it. A sort of burning plastic scent lingered in the room, 
The left wall of the office was completely filled with various posters of the establishment's mascot. Some of them were adverts, some were kids' drawings, while others were black and white, and seemed impossibly old. A window was on the back wall, which looked out into an alleyway, and the wall to the right had the door labelled Back Stage. In front of Ethan, sitting behind a desk, was Christopher Wright. Ah, oh, visitor. Hello there. Come, sit down. He wore a light blue dress shirt with a black and red striped tie, as well as white trousers. He had a stubble beard, along with smart, slicked over hair. On top of his nose sat a pair of rectangle frame glasses. Unlike what Adam had said, he looked quite professional and welcoming. So I assume this is about the job offer outside, yeah? Yes, it is. All right. Well, it's a part-time position. It involves mostly working out front where you'll be helping customers out, cleaning now and again, and making sure those damn kids aren't <laughs> wrecking the place or cutting their own eye out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there will be times where we get more stock in and you'll have to put them all away in their correct places. Doesn't sound too bad. Don't celebrate too soon. <laughs> Uh, we do have a mascot suit that somebody will need to wear sometimes to entertain the kids. Mainly because he's limited when he performs on his own. At the moment, I'm the only one who wears him, but I'm looking to get our staff members wearing him too. He's pretty tall, but you should fit fine. You're quite lanky. Wait, so... I'll get to wear it? Yeah, that's right. Sweet! You seem very happy about that. Yeah! I'm doing a robotics class in school, and I'm working on an exoskeleton at home! Oh, really? Well, maybe in the future you could help perform maintenance on him. <laughs> I would love that. Oh, damn. Look at the time. I won't be able to show you anything today since we're closing soon, but are you fine with 12 p.m. tomorrow? Wait, so have I got the job? Of course. You seem like a really nice kid. Plus, because of how little staff we have, my boss told me not to be too strict with the requirements. Well, it's... Th this is... brilliant! Oh, I'm so glad I get to be working with you! <laughs> Whoa, fur magic. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, kid. I look forward to seeing what you can do. So am I. See ya. Bye bye now. Whoa, jeez, you made me jump. Oh, uh, sorry. I was just checking in how it went. Yeah, it went well. I'll be in tomorrow at midday. I'll be with you tomorrow. Anyway, he wasn't weird at all, was he? I didn't really see what you meant. He seemed perfectly fine to me. Chris can generally act strange when talking about the mascot suit. He gets way too attached to it. Now that you mentioned it, he was talking about it as if it was a living thing. Exactly my point. I'm not exactly a veteran employee. I've only been here for two months, so don't take all my advice. Just don't talk about the suit around him. I, uh... I don't get what you mean. Trust me, don't. I've seen something that I didn't want to see. And I don't want you to go through it too. Uh, just stay safe, Ethan. I'll see you tomorrow then. What was that? Ethan looks over to where he heard the strange noise. It came from the stage. He noticed that the mascot that was behind the curtains was missing. Nowhere to be seen. Huh? Where did it go? He decided to shake off the thought and continue walking past the stage towards the exit, but not before catching the smell of burning plastic again. Ah, oh, that smell again. He stood still for a second, thinking to himself, should he check behind the curtain? I mean, he's not technically an employee yet, so it's off limits. But at the same time, what if there's a fire? He drew it back and peeked into the darkness, slowly revealing more of what's behind on the light flooding in. It's nowhere back here. As he was about to give up, he heard a faint sound. At first, he couldn't tell what it was. But as he concentrated, it became more clear. It was a melody. The melody from a music box to be exact. Ethan eventually chooses to climb up onto the stage, 
and carefully tread towards the door that's hidden off to the side. After slightly opening the door, the smell is still as strong as ever. Who's there? Is it you again, Adam? Adam, you know what happened last time. Before you look in there, turn around and leave. Be a good employee and go. I said, go! Oh my god. Oh my god. What the hell was that? Ethan had never been so terrified. So many thoughts rushed into his head. Was he hurt? Maybe he should go back and help him. Except, what Adam said about finding something he shouldn't have found. Maybe it was best Ethan head home after all. Ethan? Ethan! Oh my god, where the hell have you been? It's almost ten o'clock! I was seconds away from calling the police! Look, Mom, it's fine. Listen, you're never gonna believe this. I got a job! What? Why the hell did you do that? What? Are you not happy about that? Your grades are not in a good state right now for you to go and get a job. I'm doing really good in robotics, though. Yeah, one class. You've been getting D's and everything else. Oh, I can't believe you've done this to me. Ah, <sighs> whatever, Mom. And there he goes again, back upstairs. Come on, Ethan. So Ethan lay on his bed, thinking about the day he had just had, and how terrible everything could have been. He looked over to the exoskeleton in the corner of the room. <sighs> Why? The end of chapter one. To be continued.